the SP44 was the first tool that I gravitated towards. I had started messing with it and realized how easily I can translate my feelings through it. A long time later, I'm still like, oh, these are the boxes I feel very comfortable around. The LA beat scene was definitely my first time feeling like I was in a place that celebrated the exact same thing that I did. And it was music that I can truly understand and truly relate to. Like Low and Theory was a place that was just so interesting to us. And we were like, oh, you know, I didn't know much. My friend was like, you need to check this out. I'll drive you over there. And it's like a 40 mile drive. And then I started, you know, eventually playing there myself and then realizing, oh, he's also using a SP404 and so is, so is that guy. And, you know, Sam I Am, John Wayne, DiBiase. I started seeing everyone's actually using the same machine. For me, it just made so much sense. Like the plugin, the simple setup, you're basically premeditative DJ slash live set. You can easily do your own vision quickly, like through this machine. I'm sitting here with the 404 MK2. I have it right in the center next to my favorite companions, which are the original 404. Just wanted to talk about my first interaction with it. Off the bat, the first thing I noticed was the pads having sensitivity. I think I'm more used to this just on off button, but I'm really interested to see how detail oriented you can get. I think that's the first thing I noticed with this machine is that it's extremely detail oriented. Get closer to your sound, whatever that may be. It kind of ruined my face plates. And I think with this one, it's kind of key not to. And if you're like not really wanting to look at a computer screen all the time, this is your option because you're getting all that information in this very small interface where you don't have to feel that drag of a computer all the time. I think with chopping, this will become a lot cleaner. I tend to have lots of issues getting loops to be perfect. You can be off by a little bit and you let something loop for about a minute and you're going to start to get this drift. And I think this new machine has canceled that out completely. That saves a ridiculous amount of hours. I think pitch speed is really cool. It's just quite instantly, you're just fine tuning your sounds. When you work with samples and you're working with a lot of loose sounds, you get this hodgepodge of things that aren't really on the same exact pitch, but you're kind of gaining that ability to fine tune things quite quickly. The easy, quick thing for everybody is this chromatic mode, being able to, you know, hear a sample. The bus effect is incredible. I haven't really dialed it down for myself yet, but I'm enjoying this bus. The ability to just have two effects at once, uh, you know, the issue, the limitation of the SP404 was one effect, that's it. And if you want to dance between effects, you're kind of having this split second of no effect and then looking for your new effect or trying to be very quick and, you know, fancy about it. And this maybe changes that whole game. If, say, if I want to delay, And then I want. So I have both effectively going and I can switch back and forth to, you know, see, see what's going on. If I want to change it, tweak it, fix it. The cassette simulator is pretty out of control. I love how you have these age groups for how old your cassette is. kind of brings out a really warm sound. That's incredible. Let's see. I think that's a whole new new tool here for this kind of thing. I'm shocked that you don't have to have a gigantic card anymore. You know, that was just like a whole thing of finding these camera cards for the SP and stacking up so you can like continuously change sets. But since everything's internal now, it seems like a, a happier place, you know, overall. I have my 404 here, the older one, and it's strictly RCA. But I feel like having the quarter inch 
opens up that doorway to many more machines and many more tools that other artists are using, especially with collaboration. You're now able to quickly kind of join hands and go direct into the source, record in. The USB is out of control. So many people carry a lot of their music on their phone. I have my Dropbox always on my phone. I think going directly makes it a lot easier to experiment with it instead of going from the phone to the computer, then the computer to here, or like through email and whatnot. This is a production heavyweight kind of tool compared to its old generation. I feel like as somebody that just uses this quite often, they've answered so many questions I'm sure people have been asking for on the ability to make music with this machine. Sharing one of my songs from my latest release, Annika, on Brain Freedom Records. We're looking at the song Mirror Memory, and I started building it in a sampler, SP404. I have some samples on my regular pads, and I have a, this going in right now. This is Sophie. She's such an incredible musician, painter. We worked together at Mind Design's house, and we recorded a lot of viola. It was actually for a different song, and I ended up building Mirror Memory in this machine and eventually reworking that viola into that song, speeding it all up and then kind of getting to where it's at now. So I can kind of play out some of the early steps of Mirror Memory. It's just like a lot of these, you know, sound loops. It's kind of like I always work with sound loops. I just have them looped up. And it's pretty much in the exact same tempo or like process of mirror memory. And some older drums. So I kind of go with it. And this was the start of this song was a very simple loop and I think I put some you know extra pads to it like extra percussion I have a, just like a long player of it and it was a very slow patterned out beat and by the time I started working on my last album uh, with that song in it it was after recording with Sophie and having that you know viola which kind of like changed everything for me and this sample basically changed my whole idea of what I wanted to do with that beat, with mirror memory. It ended up getting to a faster paced track that we kind of know today of mirror memory. When I listen to Mirror Memory, I just think about where I was. And then I think very much of Sophie's viola, where she recorded. I tend to think about the small sounds of the chair squeaking under her while she's playing. Uh, I can't really hear the cars passing, but I remember what that sounded like. So I'm kind of just transported to that moment because, you know, as we go through life, it's always changing. So it's quite nice to remember that moment of uh, the collaboration of those, those people you're with. It's just like just living, you know? I think it's just like a little snapshot of the energy right there kind of feeling. What I have here is a bit of generative art. I've been really interested in digital works for a while now. And over the past year since touring kind of slowed down with the pandemic, I decided to make a project. And I started working on it mainly this year. And it's a NFT project of 404. And there is a reason for the number. Images based off of moving GANs like this one that we're looking at now. And the images all kind of come from a bunch of my paintings. So I paint most of my album covers. I've done many record sleeve paintings in the past. And I usually pull these from throwaway bins and start working with the material. Just to kind of give a look at some of the stills, there's just a few here I can show you easily and quickly. 
basically pulling out stills from those motion GANs or even just pulling what they call seeds, where once the machine is learning from the art, like so I have it learn over weeks training on my work, and it starts to get to a point where it looks a little more reasonable. And when I get to that point, I, I end up pulling the seeds out and saying, okay, these are all really cool. I'll, I'll take these from this latent space in this computer and have these prints. So to circle back to the reason why we have 404 of them is I believe that that actual machine started everything that led to this project. Finding those record sleeves that were completely destroyed and battered and deciding to paint on them was because I was going to these record stores to just look for samples and look for music to work with. This is a 404. So I was like, well, this is the coolest first place you go to. You go to the record store, you sample, you go through the process. And as I was doing that, I just kept walking by these dirty, you know, these throwaways. And I was just like, oh, that's, you know, it's a shame. They just kind of like sit in the sun and bake. So I started taking them home and painting them and just enjoying that process of being at the record store, this all-encompassing place of sound and visuals and just people meeting together and built that to eventually making paintings and then turning them into AI generative works of art. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Community is pretty much everything. I look at it as a way to find yourself, to learn about yourself and learn about the world through other people's eyes. I think there's so much you can gain from grouping together and helping each other. Music is just a, a great tool to give us that community. It's like yelling, it's a voice and it's the ability to connect from far away. I believe music is one of the most powerful languages we have to talk to one another, to set aside many differences and to come together.